Hi, my name is Mike. I'm part of the pastoral team at High Point Church. You know, recently we've been talking about bless, and bless is just a simple process of sharing your faith with others. That's a scary proposition for a lot of people, and yet eight times in the Bible it says, love your neighbor. It even goes as far as to say, love your neighbor as yourself. It'd be fine if you said it once, but eight times, I think God meant it. And yet it's one of those things that we struggle with because we like to get it right. It's very interesting in the uh, early church, 80% of evangelism didn't happen by Paul or Timothy or one of the apostles or one of the helpers even. It was just everyday person sharing what had happened to them with their neighbors. It was just a daily conversation. And that's really what Jesus meant it to be as he said, love your neighbor as yourself. And so let's talk about the five steps of BLESS. B stands for begin with prayer. A few weeks ago, we handed out these cards. And on the back was just three lines. And above it, a simple phrase that said, I'm praying for. A lot of us think prayer comes along with this guilt trip. Oh, no, I have to do that. When really, it's recognizing that God understands who's around us, and he wants to use us as light. In Corinthians, it says that we're an ambassador. We're there on God's behalf. And he's given all of us friends, coworkers, family, classmates, a variety of different people that we get to speak into their lives, and they speak into our lives. But it's the Holy Spirit who draws people to himself. And so it's very important when we come to something as important as sharing our faith that we do it with people who God knows their heart condition. And so to begin with, bless is just asking God, who should I pray for? Now, over the years, I've found that when I ask God for something, if I give him time to answer me, there's often a thought that flashes through my mind, and I can pretty much rely on that, that that's God's answer back to me through his spirit. When I started this, I just prayed, God, you know who are around me. Who do you want me to pray for? And then I just am quiet, 20, 30 seconds. And I've always had a face, a name, something flash through my mind, and I jot that down. And I found out that God is faithful then to facilitate that relationship. The next one is L. L stands for listen with care. Listening is something that we all think we do really well. God gave us two ears and one mouth, twice as much as listening as talking, but that's not something that a lot of us are comfortable with. One study said that most people don't listen to understand, they listen for their turn, because we all have something to say, and we think it's really important, but that's not how you build a relationship. Building relationship means, I care about you. That's why it's listen with care. Not listening for information, but listening with care. So we have to think about what are the questions that we use? How are we going to step into a conversation? It's pretty much proven that if you ask for information, you're gonna get information back. If you ask a simple, how was your day? You're probably gonna get a fine, not a commentary on the day. Because most of us are a little shy about sharing that much about ourselves. So we have to ask some questions that are different. Maybe questions that how do you feel about this? Or what's something that is an obstacle to you really being who you want to be? What's been your greatest success as a person? What's been your greatest success in a relationship? What caused failure in a relationship? What's the one thing you're working on for the goals that you've set in your life? All of those questions require an answer from inside and can't be answered with an okay or maybe or a fine. And they cause reflection. And once reflection starts, you begin to have the opportunity to listen with care. The next is something that we just like doing together, and it seems like God put it in the heart of man to eat together. And so eat with each other. Go out for pizza, come over for coffee. A lot of business is done over lunch, breakfast. There's a book that was written a few years ago called The Art of Neighboring. Neighboring is difficult because we pull into our garages and we shut the door and we go into the house and never really are outside. And to invite somebody over for a meal just seems like a huge step. And yet it's something that all of us do every day. So it's not even something that's an extra. We can just share a meal together. And if that's too much in an apartment or even a household, you know, all the kids running around, 
Go grab something. Take an hour. Go grab a burger. Do something that is a step towards them. And by the way, pay for it. The next letter is S. S stands for serve with love. A few weeks ago, I was able to do something for a neighbor. And he said, you don't have to do that. I said, you're right. I don't. And he just kind of laughed. And we got to start talking. We talked about 20 minutes. And it was really good. And it all started because I did something really simple for him. There's a variety of things. Maybe the neighbor's got a little kid. And you say, you know what? I'd gladly watch your child for a couple hours while you guys go out on a date. Be creative. Look at the situation. What could you do to help them? And the last then is share your story. Sometimes we think that needs to be first. But cold calls don't work in sales and they don't work in evangelism either. They were never meant to work because we're meant to be relational with one another. One of the books I think is really helpful is The Nine Arts of Spiritual Conversations. How do we step into those conversations that really matter? It's a good practice to hone up on some skill sets and then practice. Moving a conversation from the weather to the work, to family, to a deeper topic, to something that might be mentioned in the Bible, to their view on something, is, is an art form. And it means that we have to take time to really think about what might they want to talk about and how can I transition. I have a friend who really wanted to lead somebody to Jesus. His neighbor moved in, and his neighbor turned out to be a golf pro. Well, the problem was, at the time, Gary didn't play golf. But he really felt convicted he should reach this neighbor. So Gary took lessons, not from the golf pro next door, but from another pro in town. Took lessons for six months. After nine months from meeting the guy, he began to feel comfortable enough to say, hey, I know you're a golf pro, you wanna play golf sometime. It was another year later when the guy came over to Gary's house and said, I know you're a Christian. I appreciate the fact that you haven't pushed it on me, but we've talked some. We're having a marriage issue. Could I talk to you about it? A few weeks went by of conversation and Gary got the opportunity to lead the guy and his wife to Christ. We don't know the timetable and it's really not ours to know, but it is ours to work in the rhythms of bless throughout the day, throughout the year, throughout the years. Allow the Holy Spirit to do his work. It's up to us to just kind of set the table so that the Holy Spirit has something to work with. He's usually going to use us if we're paying attention. And so bless is just an easy rhythm to pray for people, to listen to the people, share a meal with people, serve them, and along the way, share who Jesus is in your life and what he's done for you, even this week because that matters. If you'd like to read more about this whole topic, there's a book called Bless. It's by that title, by Ferguson and Ferguson, and you can pick it up on Amazon. And it's a good read. It's a simple thing of just walking through. One of the things we've also done at High Point is, is reproduce the journal for you, just called Bless. One of the things I encourage you to do is capture the story. As you think about how prayer affected you, as you think about how a conversation affected you, realize that that's God using you to do his work. What happened when you shared a meal? What happened when you served somebody? What happened when you began to share how God has touched your life? What was the reaction both then for you and for them? And then go to highpointchurch.org slash bless. Share your story with us. We'd really appreciate that. Thanks.